Hello and welcome to the Ball Watch Guy with a special episode of the Watch Table. Guys, how are you doing? I'm doing very good. Good. So, guys, what's on the wrist today? Shepard, let's uh, start with you again. Uh, we'll start with me, eh? Uh, today I'm wearing the Ball Watch Guy's favorite. Ah, yes. Love it. And uh, anyone will be pleased to know that I'm not wearing it on a leather strap. <laughs> but it works. That's good. Good. Finally, you made one good choice when it comes to uh, bracelets and straps. To be I'll fair, you, that. you only had one negative comment, so it was not that bad. No, I saw, and I've, I've put it back on the bracelet now because I felt self-conscious about myself, <laughs> so thanks. <laughs> Random person on the internet. <laughs> You've influenced what I do, and I said I wasn't going to, but I've done it. Hey-ho. Peer pressure for the win. Mm-hmm. Seaton, what you're wearing? Thought it'd be quite fitting today. It hasn't been worn in quite a while, but um, Tudor 36 millimeter uh, is out of focus. That's my style out of focus, but it is a 36 millimeter Black Bay. Um, lovely watch. I guess you could say the sister to the Explorer. Yeah, cracking watch. Nice. EQD, what you're wearing? So uh, usually I'd have my um, uh, GMT on, although today on the wrist I've actually got my G Shock. Um, I don't really wear it too much, but it's a nice one to wear. I was cleaning the car earlier, so I was wearing that, and you know, it's a good one to do. You know, just general like stuff outside with. You don't need to worry about bashing it or anything like that. It's a nice one. And I've all... never seen the orange on that because that's the GM two one hundred, isn't it? I believe so. It's red. It's actually red. It's probably my camera being awful. It's it's red. Um, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's not bad. Like, I mean, it's like my favorite colors. Like my whole like setup. I love like black and red and white, and yeah, it just kind of fits. Yeah, good watches. I'm probably the only one who does not own a G-Shock, to be fair. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good thing. You need one. You need a G-Shock. They're amazing. Okay. Go have one, mate. On my wrist, something very small and elegant. It's a Maurice Rocraf from the 1990s, and it was my grandfather's watch that I restored back Beautiful. to life. Um, yeah, I felt a bit rusty, so... Um, that's nice. Yeah. That, that's you nice. Know what that gives me? It gives me massive... Um, you know the Patek... Uh, they, they did a very oh, it was the eclipse. No, no it was, I think it looked, I think it was the eclipse. That is nice. I like that bracelet. That bracelet. Mm. I, that it looks. It looks. Is comfy. it integrated? Uh, it is, it? yes, it is. That dial is really yeah. funky as well. I'm it's preaching. Cool, I'm trying to preach to go to a smaller dial, so I'm putting my own money yep. where my mouth is for a change. <laughs> oh, that is nice. I like that a lot. And this you might like as well. I bought this lovely strap from uh, Mr. Chrono in Brussels, and I'm going to put this on the Speedmaster, actually. Beautiful. That is nice. If you guys like a bit of green. Green, nice color. Yeah, it's pretty different. That's nice. Talking about Speedmaster, guys. You guys saw the news about the new Speedmaster? Any thoughts? Yeah, Mm -hmm. the white dial. I I really like it. I like the fact that they put the, um, the Speedmaster in red. Because it just gives it that little pop. Um, I'm, I'm a fan. I am a fan. I know everybody will just sort of go, oh, you know, they're they're milking the Speedmaster Moonwatch cow again. And yes, they are. But you know, I like it. It's nice. It's a nice addition to the family. So I'm, I'm right in saying that the specs are exactly the same. Exactly the, the uh... same. Same 3861 okay. movement, same bracelet. Mm-hmm. I think for me, I think it's going to take a bit of time to get used to. I love the Speedmaster Professional. I love the black. It's um that kind of that that the the, the it's like a matte, almost a matte black kind of like dial. Um, mm-hmm. and I just for me, I'm not a massive lover of white dial watches. I did have, for example, the the, the Hamilton Khaki 38 millimeter on white, uh, and it didn't. It just didn't didn't float with me, and I think it, 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 the white dolls go throughout watches. Um, so me personally, if I was going to buy one, I would go for the black, the classic, the original. Um, but it does, it is, it is beautiful. And I, I do you know what, Shepard? That is one thing which is is nice about that dot is the red Speedmaster. I don't know what it is, but it, that is, I do quite like that. It's kind of the, offsetting. Look, the, the I would. The, the the red the red actual kind of oh, it says, Dex, yeah. in red. I thought you meant yeah. the red Speedmaster. I was like, wait, no, no, there no. is a, a dial. What? There is a red Speedmaster, the Schumacher edition. There is actually one. This yeah, 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 yeah. unfortunately, yeah. 
Uh, I've got a whole book uh, when it comes to speed maps. I think I have a picture somewhere or a pop it up. I'm somewhat in between with the white speed master, to be fair. If I would go today, day to day to buy a speed master, I would still pick up the black. Uh, it's yeah. the white is not a very original per se. We've seen no, it in the I, past, and it's already I think most of the purists will probably go with the with the black. Um, I know a lot of the purists go with the um, is it the, the Hesalite as opposed to the sapphire because that's mm. what it was. Um, but you know, it's it's for its own audience. It just. For me, I I think the the white makes it just look that little bit more sporty. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I yeah. feel like it's going to be hard to pair that with clothes. Is that just me? Is that just me? I'm very boring when it comes to clothes. Put me in a normal jumper. No, nah, white blue jumper. White white t shirt, tan shorts in the summer. I mean, I think it'll be alright. White I mean, Air Force like ones. The... Done. Yeah, exactly. It's like the 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 opening GMT they released last year. It's like. That still looks really good and works and will work with a lot of different clove options and stuff like that. Like, it should be fine, but I guess it's just personal preference, isn't it, at the end of the day? Just the price yeah. is crazy. It's 100 bucks What's more the than the regular. Is it 7,000? 9,000? 9,000 euro, I believe? It, it, or it's in, very expensive. In, in, in pounds, it's 7,600. But if it's only 100 quid more, then like if you're spending that much already, it's not really like a, you know... And you're, there's probably going to be a waiting list, so you can forget about getting a discount the first six months. Hmm. Hmm. I'm, nah, I'm sure. I have one. I miss. mean, don't yep. get me wrong. I still prefer the black. But I do like the white. Anyways, Rolex released the first watch today. And this is kind of perfect when we were talking about it last week. Uh, they released hmm. a new day date uh, where they celebrate the Oscars, I believe. It's, it was uh, the Academy Awards, yeah. Yeah, it never yeah. rose. Yeah, I saw it. It looked quite nice, to be fair. I think it's stunning. Stunning, stunning like watch. Do it's... we know the price tag on that, anyone? I think it's going to be enough catalog retail? piece. Oh, right. Okay. So in, in normal folk language, the unobtainable watch, unless the uh, the pockets are rather deep. Hmm. It's You're actually... Sure. On it. Yeah. It's actually their second special day date they brought out this year. They also brought to the... Um... The music day date uh, for the Vienna Philharmonic uh, New Year's concert with a uh, violin on it. They're really doing some fun stuff. But unfortunately, you cannot buy them. Mm -mm. What's mm. the point then? Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. They, it's, they, the need, they kind of. I mean, Rolex can do obviously that. They, they have the power of, of kind of of the of the people, um, and and they they choose obviously their clientele. But I I can't. It's, it's like what we were talking about on the, on the last um, last episode. I can't see Rolex doing anything towards the more affordable or more obtainable, I should say, um, route. I think they're just going to keep pumping out precious metals, precious dials, and limited quantities. But um, there's questions to be said about this um, limited quantities, you know. Yeah, I mean, they've there. been trying to like advertise themselves more as like a luxury kind of item. Um, mm. as the years have gone by and yeah they're just more going in that direction rather than like more for the average consumer mm -mm. it's not only that uh, I read a bit of the Stanley Morgan reports and um, I also saw for example that Rolex has uh, the average purchase price from over 13k compared to like other watch brands like Omega where mm. it's like 6 or 7 so people are still willing to buy the special editions or a touch of gold just to oh, yeah. buy a Rolex compared to other brands. It's it's crazy. They can they can charge whatever they like. Like everybody went went tried to went up market more and more Omega GLC, but it does not seem to work as a strategy for the most brands. I think it's yeah. just Rolex well, are kind I... of iconic. Like like obviously the others are as well, but I mean generally if you ask a, if you ask the general public about you know a few watch brands, they're gonna probably say what Casio Rolex like. Or something mm. similar. Mm. Well, not only talking about Rolex, AP uh, released another model, a collaboration with John Mayer. Anybody was waiting for that? I think it's lovely. <laughs> yeah. No, I, just, I, I do you know what? I think it looks beautiful. I, I really like do look. think it looks beautiful. However, though, it's uh, once again, super, super price tag. Um, but that textured dial, that's something different. That is really, really something different. It's not a kind of... Um, 
I believe it's like some sort of a crystal blue dial. Yeah, that's um, a petrol calendar. Uh, I much white, prefer it I to the, the recent one they did with uh, was it Travis Scott? The, awful, like, awful, one they released? awful, awful. Yeah. I, I, I'm yeah, not agree. a big fan of that at all. I do, yeah. I, do. I think I think it was it was the John Mayer the, the John Mayer one is um is way more um easy to wear. I I don't know how to word this, but you could I mean stain it looks stainless steel with a blue dial. <laughs> Um, and and that they they you know the fifteen four hundred in blue dial. I mean that sold you know, is constantly selling out. So I think it's, I think it's perfect colors. I don't think I mean, going... if you zoom in on that dial as well. It's so cool. Like it's so, like the texture on it. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like a three D kind of. It also look it, it kind of looks like something out of like um an alien mu- movie kind of the yeah, landscape. I was, yeah, it's always... I was gonna say that it looks like a planet or something like a bunch of yeah. rocks like put together. So cool. Yeah. Aren't they going too far a, with the collaborations? AP, aren't they more like deteriorating the brand more and more with it? I mean, with I think this. Uh, oh, no, go on, go on, you go on. Yeah, well, the, the, what I was going to say, I, was, I think they have to keep up with trends. I think more and more people now are getting into watches for the hype. Um, I was about and... to say the same thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think AP I... are suffering from like hype brand sort of. I mean, they do what they did with the. They did the the. The Spider Man watch and then the Black Panther watch as well, didn't they? Awful, yes. awful, awful, and awful watches. I, I'm a sucker for anything Spider Man. Do you so like I, the Spider Man one? I quite like the Spider Man one. I think it looks cool. But Spider Man's feet I, in the back of the, You turn the watch over, you see them feet. Yeah, yeah. I think that's <laughs> cool. I, I think it's gimmicky. I think it's gimmicky. And it's yeah. a similar conversation when we had when we were talking about the sort of like the the cool dials that Rolex produced with like the bubbles and the jigsaw. Um, it's cool to an extent, but it's only available to those with the cash to get it. And it's sort of like one of them things that it's, if you've got the facilities to buy it, it's a great addition to a collection, but mm. the, the average Joe isn't going to have one. So it's a bit mid. Mm. Yeah. Talking oh, about the average the Joe. Time, yeah, it's too expensive. Mm. Tudor. Tudor. Yeah. I've got that like, same booklet on the other side of my room, actually. Yeah. I think every, I feel like everyone that's bought a Tudor has got that booklet. I don't know why <laughs> yeah. we all have it. But I don't we've have just one. Obtained one. I don't you need one. to get one. No, I'm instead I got, I got a Tudor tie clip. Uh, ah, they actually what? upgraded yeah. the catalog a lot compared to what it used to be. At least now you get a strong, decent booklet. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It was cool. The only thing is, though, the thing that really annoys me, my watch, I don't think is in that. Well, I, I, I well, kid you not. Let's like, check. Really? Let's check. Yeah, th- that configuration I do not think is in that booklet. So on on the bracelet, black dial, thirty six millimeters, or the I think they do it in like a forty one. I don't. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Uh, they do dial, all the other dial. Dial. Yes, they do. Thirty six. Oh, they do. Okay. Get punked. Well, my, <laughs> yeah, my one. My, it's not in there. I'm being deadly serious. It is not in that booklet. Well, right. it is. It's right there. <laughs> it's right here. Dude. Yeah. Page I'm number seventy-seven. <laughs> I feel like I should go and check in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to go and get mine? I'll verify. No. <laughs> <laughs> Double checking. So, guys, Tudor had a, an amazing run the last few years with the release of the original Black Bay Forty-One. Uh, we, we're in a more soft watch market. If I pass the stores, there used to be a time when we couldn't buy. The chronographs, the GMTs, and now I'm seeing everything is in stock. Do you guys think the brand slowed down a bit? Mm. No, I I think it's, I think, me, thinking out loud here. I think it's because they it's I think just in general, as you say, the watch market has softened. Um, <clears throat> I think people. I mean, I, I I'm guilty of this as well. I mean, when I bought my, so I I I. I Start again. Put my teeth back in. I've owned two Tudors. First one I bought was my Steel and Gold, um, and we discussed this on one of the other episodes of the of my collection. I bought it because it was reminiscent of the Submariner, and then I bought the Black Bay Pro because it was reminiscent of the Explorer Two, the original one. Yeah. And the only reason I bought those two watches was because they look like Rolexes. I don't mm. think people have just. I just don't think people have. The facilities a to buy them as much anymore because of everything that's going on in the world but also i just i don't know like i look at a tune and i think that's a great bit of engineering with the mt movement but mm, i'm just mm, See, i'm not i'm, I'm not wowed different. by it anymore i'm not wowed 
Maybe it's I'm the fact different. with the new factory they built, maybe you are able to pump up more watches than they were able to do before. Yeah. Maybe. That's probably, the, that's probably the answer. It's good, um, <clears throat> in my opinion. The new, fa new factory they've done is really good because they technically they can produce the in-house movements now and like, generally from watching videos, um, the whole process of them creating the watches, it's done a lot more efficiently now with the robots, but it's still hand assembled. Um, it's like it's a really like cool innovative way of doing things. So you still keep like the the human touch of it, but you don't have people like running around the factory, you know, like putting trays of parts, you know, next to other people. It's just all completely done by like robotics, which is it's really cool. But I don't know, like it's all sort of personal opinion. So last year, yeah, did I'm, a few. I'm a message. Go, go, go. So last year, Tudor did a few updates. They updated the Black Bay uh, 41 with the Burgundy model. They added the Opaline Dahl GMT. They updated the other Black Bay range, the one Seaton is wearing. Is it is it the new model or the old one you're wearing? What my one? Uh, this is the old one. Yeah, this is this is the old one. I think I think the new one they they came out they came up with a, like a Jubilee bracelet. I got this I think twenty twenty two I believe. 22 or 23? 23, I think. Mm. Yeah, I'm not too sure. They During the year, they added a few new Pelagos models. They added the Red Bull ones, which I think were mm -hmm. absolutely ghastly, in my opinion. Uh, once you see the Red Bull logo on the dial, you can never unsee it again. And mm -hmm. they added the Pelagos, I believe, as well. I felt a bit like same old, same old from Tudor this year, with exception of the 54. The I like was 54. Good though. I was going to say, I think the 54 is probably one of the better watches that they've yeah. announced in a while. Um, but I just, the, the Pelagos, I was never again, like, I love Tudor as a brand. I love what they do. I love how they do it. But the execution, you know, I look at, see, I look at that, that's what, a Pelagos? Yes. Yeah. I look at, yeah. I look at that and I'm just like, mm. I mean, yeah. I guess it's because it's like a modern, like modern take on a diver, in my opinion. But it's got so much heritage, though. That's the thing I love yeah. about Tudor. So my 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 favorite favorite Tudor is a Tudor Submariner, a vintage one, snowflake, the blue snowflake. Yeah, and yeah. when they came up with the Pelagos in blue, I was like, oh, that's so nice. So I I I do I do like the Pelagos, but I think I think. Out of the order and how they go, what what the, the new the new releases last year, I think that fifty four just wins. I think it just beats the Pelagos. Um, the dimensions for me are perfect, um, and you also get a lot of heritage with that. You know, it it, it came out a year, the original one, the Tudor Submariner, because it's a reinterpretation of the Tudor Submariner, and it came out a year after Rolex came out with the Submariner. So it's 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 got some history to it. It's got yeah, some kind of um, some it, If you look at the original yeah. Submariner, you can see the inspiration. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I also like the fact that I mean I don't know whether it's the same in other places, but they don't really have a waiting list necessarily unless you're on a really like really, really popular limited model. Like I I walked into um I worked in and bought my GMT like immediately, and I got a, I got a deal on it as well. I didn't get a deal necessarily. I got the strap and that like the case with it as well. But like I think that's a that's a big thing as well for Tudor is the fact that Rolex you can put on a waiting list for God knows how long now. And I mean, if you again like if you're not really into your watches necessarily, you can um, pick up a Tudor that looks you know fairly reminiscent of a lot of Rolex models for a lot less money and immediately get it mm -hmm. rather than having to wait ages or like even pay a premium, uh, you know, on on the grey market for the model that you want. Here's my... I mean, I accidentally kind of bought bought this one. Like I did, I didn't really intend to buy this watch. I loved the Explorer One. I think it's what happens. To this day, you, you walked into the AD and you dropped your Mastercard by accident in the in the machine and no. <laughs> <laughs> I went to go and get a um an Explorer One, and they said no, you can't obviously get one. You have to be in a waiting list. <clears throat> So I left and I was quite like, ah, oh, all right, well, I want something like it. And then, um, yeah, I went into a couple of other ADs and I, someone introduced me to this one. Uh, I bought it and it came next day. I loved it. And then um, I did get offered the Explorer one. I walked into the AD 
Um, and they said, oh, you're still on the waiting list for the Explorer 1 in stainless steel. I was like, yeah. And he handed me the watch and he said, you can buy it right now. And I was hit with a dilemma um, and I, I refused it on the basis I just prefer the Tudor. The Tudor is its a completely different feel. It's a little bit thicker. It's a little bit more robust. I've learned to love the Tudor Snowflake Hand. Um, and I was just like, yeah, I just i just prefer the Tudor. Right, can, we, can, we just, can we just pause and rewind two yeah. sentences? You prefer the 36mm Black Bay over yeah. the Explorer 1. That's quite a hot take. It's, mm, that is yeah. a, that is that is a that is a hot take. A that hot is, take. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that at all, though. I no, think, there's nothing I think, wrong with it. There's nothing. I wrong like with the look. I love the look of the Explorer One. I love the look of the Explorer One, but there's something about this Tudor, and I I think what I need to do is the most sensible thing. I need to buy a Relic Explorer One um, and actually test it out. How is that the most sensible thing to do? <laughs> <laughs> and then the whoever doesn't you... get wrist time gets sold. But You've got to um, wait two years now because you you decline the watch from your AD, so they're well, going. That's, no, that's the thing as well. That's the thing as well. I mean, we're now in a watch market where if I wanted to go and get an Explorer One, I could just go grey market, and they are no, retail, they are, yeah, or less less than retail, which is good. It's good for us. It's good for collectors. Mm, agreed. Still, again, how is that a good decision just to buy another watch to compare to your two? I'm not sure that's the best. Well, then you, you, then, you then you find out the one you um. Oh, one sec, just move my camera. Um, then you actually find out which one you really generally want, and then the one that gets the most wrist time stays in the collection, and the one that doesn't. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, you'll wear the Explorer more. I'm, I'm telling you now, like I'm, I didn't think I'd wear the Submariner as much as I was going to, and that was the same with my date just. And the only reason I'm wearing my Omega is because I knew the bald watch guy wasn't going to be wearing his, so I felt like it had to be a running trend. Someone's got to wear a Speedmaster during these chats. That's the only reason I'm wearing this today. I had to break the but I had to break and bug the trend. Yeah, I don't like this because you guys are now putting me back on the Explorer. Like you, you're now making me want the Explorer again. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. So, guys, what do you yeah. think is going to happen this year with the brand? Oh. I know what I want to happen. Go on. I'd love to see a better chronograph. I'm sorry, I don't like the 58 chronograph or the Black Bay chronograph, whatever it is. Bing back the I've, big block, I've, I've, please. I've, I've... Yeah. It's too big. It's massive. If the, if 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 that went on a diet, and that got slimmed down, it looked perfect. That's that's the one of... watch I'd really, really... They've got an amazing diver. They've got an amazing kind of like dress watch, everyday watch. Give us a really good chronograph. They didn't they didn't provide a good chronograph last year with the Red Bull. What was that? Um, it's now time to bring us a really decent Daytona styled chronograph. Actually, I disagree. Yeah. My brother. I want to big... see the heritage. Ah, oh, yeah. I don't mind the chrono. I like the chrono. I didn't at the start, and then I sort of appreciated it more as kind of time went by. I believe there's a segment for the current chronograph. My brother has one, the Black Dial, and he has a much bigger wrist than most of us. And the, the chunkiness actually works. But I do agree for most people, the Black Bay 41, the GMT, and the chrono are way too big. So too big. a smaller size would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's the thickness of a lot of them as well. I mean, like, look at mine. Like, it, it's a, it's a, it's a chunky watch. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a very chunky watch. And I mean, if you don't have a smaller wrist, then it can be a, it can be a. Sorry, if you don't have a bigger wrist, it can be a, it can be a trouble. That was the same with the Black Bay Pro when I owned it. It's, it's thick, because not only have you got a, a thick case, you've also then got that curved crystal as well. So it just adds yeah. to the, the height. Yeah, and does, yeah. as I said on. A, a couple of episodes ago, like it worked on my wrist because I've got seven and a quarter inch, seven and a half inch wrist, depending on the temperature. It, it was okay for me, but if you were, say, for example, Seaton, who has slightly smaller wrists, and you wore that, it, it would it's tiny. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big I, didn't, I didn't want to call you baby wrists, but <laughs> oh, I've got baby wrists. I don't even know. I mean, but whenever I buy a watch, you best you know that half the links on the watch are thrown back in the box. <laughs> But if, if Seaton was to wear the, the Black Bay Pro, in my opinion, it would just look silly. It would just, it would look mm. too I mean, like, thick. 
it looks okay on my wrist, but again, that's because my wrist isn't like, you know, it's not thin. <laughs> it's a bit chunky. It's seven and a half inches um, round, so it looks all right. But if you add like anything under like a six and a half, you, you might struggle, to be honest with you. Mm. But I mean, I'd love, you know, do, do you guys remember the the Tudor, is it the Tiger chronograph? Like the original kind of like, it had like yes. the oyster, like a Rolex at symbols. They were so cool. They were so so cool and so elegant, so kind of slim. I I don't I don't understand why they have to go massive. These big watches, they're just no one can wear them unless you have a massive wrist. Mm. So bring some, bring us, bring us something small. Bring us something that you know the everyday person, or bring us different sizes. Reduce yeah. the size of the chronograph. I would I would really like to see just like a regular forty one slim Tudor chrono heritage mm. they, they discontinued it a while ago have some different bezel colors maybe some different subdial colors just to give it a little bit more of a, like a tudor-esque feel that would be perfect i would yeah I, w I wouldn't buy one but it would be nice to see them I'd diversify their one. catalog um yeah, but as you said when the when the the chrono came out when everyone went absolutely ape shit crazy for the the watch mm. you had the white with the black subdials the panda and then you had the black with the white subdials Mm -hmm. I, at the time, when I was very much into Tudor and still starting my collection, I was like, yeah, 100%. I really want that. really want that. And then slowly, I just sort of like disconnected with it because I tried it on when I when there was one in the AD. I put it on and I just thought, nah, mm. I don't, I'm not interested in it. And then, because like, I, was, I was undecided at the time, do I get a Tudor Chrono? Do I get the brand new uh, blue Breitling Navi timer? I think it was a 39 or a 40 at the time. Or do I get a Speedmaster Professional? Speedmaster. And and I went, yeah, I've got the money for it. I'm going to go Speedmaster. And 100% oh, yeah. if I bought the Chrono, I'd have sold it by now. Cause yeah, I agree. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't wear it as much as I do this. But I feel like the reason, the reason in this case... If you're comparing the chrono, the, the, the Tudor chrono, I don't know the actual name of it, but I'm just going to call it the Tudor, Tudor chronograph, versus the Speedmaster, I feel like the reason the choice of the Speedmaster is one heritage and two, it's slimmer. You can wear that watch. Mm. It fits under a cuff. With the Tudor, you have to go to the gym twice as hard on one arm because Thank it's you. big, oh, yeah. heavy. I don't know how yeah. well my camera is going to pick up the thickness of this, but mm -hmm. not very well. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's yeah, slim. It's, not bad. it's it's it just works. Yeah, that is a nice moon swatch. I do like that one. <laughs> oh, talking about moon swatches, hey. actually, I believe that that Tudor should play a bit more with colors. So they introduced uh, the burgundy. We introduced it. You know what? One color that's missing from the collection: green. 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 I want yeah. a, oh my god! I want a green yeah. Black Bay Forty One. I want the green, uh, the model you have. Green, green, green. Just bring it to us. Yeah. The only option we really have is the yeah. Harrods, which I own, and that's a very subtle green. But just go hard with it. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's all a bit very tame at the moment, color scheme wise, in my opinion. If 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 they bought out a Tudor Black Bay Forty One with a green bezel and a green dial. I would probably buy one. Oh, you probably, of course, you would. Everyone, I would, would. buy one. I, I would, of course, yeah. I, I, not, not probably. I would, because I ain't yeah. got money for a Hulk or a Kermit or a Starbucks, yeah. whatever you want to call it. A hundred percent, I'm buying a green one. I think mm, uh, there's yeah. not enough in my in my view. There's not enough cool green affordable watches out there that are like higher end, sort of like mid three to five thousand pounds or dollars. Uh, the working. one I would really recommend is the IWC. Is it, I think it's like the Mark, I could mm. be wrong, Mark 18 or something. I have a oh, they do, this, they do a oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful green dial. And it's like a proper, real, real beautiful sunburst green dial. I you can still pick up the Herods if you want a bit of green. They still have a few in stock, I believe, before we get this continued. Yeah, but uh, yeah. That, that, watch, that watch looks like it's been put through the washing machine and the colors faded. It just, it's like a. Eh, I disagree. I like it's it. not exciting. It's not yeah, exciting. No, but... I noticed that Tudor was My heart a lot breaks well. in a thousand pieces right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it because, it, again, the colours aren't as vibrant as Rolex. Like, if you look at the... If you compare, like, if you put a GMT Master 2 up to 
mm. like um, the Tudor GMT, the cars are a lot more muted on the Tudor than they are the Rolex, and I think that's done purposefully. Like, well, they made a bad decision then. No, no yeah. I disagree. It's just because it's not meant to be as flashy. Like, you know, Tudor is it the Harrods you know, gold case? Um, no. no, I don't think so. Is no. it? No, Jesus, you make no? me think there. No. What am I thinking? What am... What am I thinking of? Where, where it's a green bezel, green dial, and gold case? What am I thinking of? There is a there, 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 there is a there is a, there is a gold Tudor. It's there's about one. fifteen grand. Yeah. This one. That book yeah. There is. There. Yeah. That's the one I'm thinking. Is that yeah. not Harry? No, it's not. No, no, no it's not. Okay. Collection. That's what I'm thinking of. That's what I'm. It's thinking. nice. It's, if it was that, but with, just with a steel case, yeah. done. Yeah, but still, the green. It's not the right green. You need something rich green. That's just like, eh. It's like the half tried. Oh, yeah, yeah. I also don't think it's a bit boring. Well, and it looks better. It looks yeah. better in real life. I'll say that it looks better in real life. I kid you not. This Tudor is more exciting than that. It's a hot take and it's no. a hot opinion, and it's very you, controversial. You, you had but... two incorrect opinions today, Seaton. No, <laughs> and you're removed from this Discord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I don't know. Max like week on the watch really, table. Really One new guest. Rich, really. <laughs> yeah. We need to replace Seaton quick. I think also I think generally about Tudor, the brand right. Whenever you think of Tudor, you think of like a dive watch, don't you? you think of a black bay of some sort, yeah. right? I think Tudor need to also, as much as focus on that, because obviously that sells and everything, they need to do more dressy type watches. Well, they have the 1996. The, the classic oh, prince yes, is classic. amazing. The... Come on. If you go back, it's if you go bit... back. What's the, the what's Royals. the day date? The, yeah. Is it the Royal? Um, it's the Royal, but it's shit. It's like I mean, not right. a sorry, no. it's it's not it anywhere near as good as your Prince Day. Be, yeah, it wouldn't be shit if that was an integrated bracelet and that was normal, where you could take the bracelet off and put any strap on it. Beautiful. Yeah, but I hate the bezel that integrated looks weird, bracelet. man. The bezel looks weird, and the case shape is weird. Where it, where it, you know where it where it goes to the um the bracelet, like True. I don't know. Just just bring I think back, they need to bring back the. It. Yeah, exactly. Just, well, just, just bring up what they have before. Tudor a while ago. Tudor a while ago had a range called the Prince. Which Amazing, is the yeah. And that bring was the, the that Prince. Was, the Prince. The Prince needs to it come back. I just, if anyone heard it, I just said the Prince's ass, but I meant the Royal. The Tudor Royal. The Royal's ass. ass. Yeah, yeah. Bring back the yeah. Prince because the, the Royal is, is ass. Also, yeah, exactly. I completely agree because the thing is, you could get right. The, the prints that was in loads of different cases as well. They could bring out a 40 or 41 prints to you know because everyone <laughs> needs one of them these days. But they originally did them, there was a limited edition, I think it was like a 201, like in a 38 or a 39. And other than that, it was 36, 30. You know, it was the, the sort of small sizes, and they could bring that back. And it's such a better looking watch, like arguably sure. It does look a lot, and I believe they may have even used like the case of a day date, right? But that's not necessarily a bad necessarily a bad thing to, to make it look more like that. Because, I mean, you're trying to tell me that, for example, like my watch here, it, obviously it pays a lot of homage to the, the GMT Master, the GMT Master 2, right? Obviously. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing wrong with Tudor creating a watch that looks similar to the Day Date. And in my opinion, that's still a lot better. Because look at the price of Day Dates now compared to the, the, the price of, like, a, a Royal. Like, you know, if they price that similarly, I reckon that's still a lot. Yeah. Just, just look at the Black Bay 58. What is that? What is that? Exactly, look, yeah. What is that, really? Come on. Like, it's... A 1950 Submariner? It's a Sub. Yeah. So it just, yeah. Like, everybody knows... Well, let's say everybody. A lot of people... A lot of, most people know in the watch community that Tudor is Rolex's little brother. And they've just... And they have slowly, over the last two, three years, gone in their own direction, and they're doing a really good job. But there is no harm in looking up to your big brother and going, right... Let's take Sorry, that design mate. and make it tutory. Actually, yeah, exactly. cool. Actually, that's the reason I think they will never bring back the Tudor Prince or the Tudor Submariner. Because they still want people to aspire to go to the Big Brother. It, it cannot be I too similar. Well, is no, it, they won't bring there... back the, the Sub. They won't bring back the Sub, but they might bring back the Prince. Because, I mean, if I was if I was the bigger brother looking down at the the Royal, I'd be I'd be very disappointed, to be fair. Like, it's, mm. you know, isn't, like... isn't Tudor's motto, born to dare or something? Yeah, yes. I think so, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, be daring, and look at your old catalogue. Yeah, I mean, I just just focus more you don't, on dress and focus you don't more on need, stuff. Just you don't diver. need to make loads of original things. Sometimes there's no harm in going back, because again, look, look at the Ranger. What's that? That's a that's an Explorer. Yeah, I love the Ranger. Yeah, it's is, is, that, is that what it's after? An Explorer. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But yeah. the problem is, great, I believe it's, it's printed on the dial the numbers, and that's kind of cheap. I really yeah. like the red end of the second hand, the second hand. Mm. No, I've I've never been a lover of the Ranger. I tell you what, I don't like the new Ranger, but the old Ranger that was a thirty six, top, mm. top, top. I like top, them both. Top. I don't feel like there's necessarily anything really that bad wrong with them. Like, uh, like it, it comes down to opinion, but I do think they need to move away from like the stereotypical like you know like dive watches because I feel like they do have too many dive watches, man. Like it's becoming a thing where. Yeah, I mean, I know I've said it before, but I've really like would like to reiterate that they have too many dive watches. They need to focus a lot more on other stuff, like and be more like, uh, how do I say, like not combative. Like uh, they need they need to enter the market in like a, in in a new direction um, and be more competitive. That's what competitive with other brands. They have a strong sports yeah. watch lineup. They're lacking a bit when it comes to uh, more classic watches, dress watches, classic watches. It's kind of a bit of yeah. a sad collection. I think that should be the focus. Bring back uh, a nice chronograph, smaller size preferably. But I'm afraid we can expect more collaborations. We've seen the Red Bull sailing one. Now we have the whole mm -hmm. V-Carb debacle where Tudor is sponsoring uh, the second racing balls team. We might see a Daniel Ricardo mm -hmm. watch popping mm -hmm. up with some luck or unluck, depending Didn't on they do ask. something with the rugby a while ago? Yeah, with the All Blacks, yeah, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, they're a sponsor, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they are. They are, yeah. I don't know. I just... They I just don't I don't look at that catalogue and think... I just don't get excited by it. I agree. It's a good yeah, way of putting I'm it. I 100% agree. I think I think they need they need something interesting. They need to change one of the one of the models almost dramatically and drastically um, to get people's attention. The um, only... To get people wanting one. The only release that I've liked from Tudor within the last 12, 24 months is the Black Bay 54. I agree. Yeah, the 54. Uh, the Chrono is I also... Think... I would say the Chrono as well. No, so what we're saying I is... like the Chrono. I, well, no, I, saying... I mean, I was excited by it. I was excited, but then... Eh, mid. So basically saying rework the Chrono, bring back more dress watch models and more just general other yeah. models. and Rework, yeah. rework yeah. the Chrono. Bring back the prints, BBP. Yep. Bring back prints. Um, focus on the dressier pieces because Tudor. Mm. You know, Tudor is a is a royal name. Period. Like, it, yeah. It'd be yep. so Tudors. cool to have. Yeah, uh, yeah like the, the Tudors, the Tudor royal, the Tudor prince. There's like that category there. Yep. Make one called the Tudor Duke. I don't care. Just to do it different, but look back. Yeah. Do it that way. Just. Dare, dare to do something different but the same. Just make it your own. But that's you know, it's difficult because Tudor have. I feel like Tudor like focus so much on their MT movement and have done for a, a large quantity of time. Um, I yeah. mean, look at the new the new one that they released. Uh, with, was it a seven day power reserve? The one on the the one with the red bezel. You know the one. Yeah, I'm on about? Not, yeah. I think that's got like a ridiculously yeah the burger yeah I, that's got like a ridiculously long power reserve. I need to double and check like, Metas as well. Yeah, they they switch from Metas to Cost. Sorry, Cotas, Cost to Metas. That's it. And they've spent so much time and energy and R and D into the movement. Now I feel like over the next two years, Tudor. Okay, cool. Take that movement, shrink it, because I know you can. Rolex can do it. You can do it too. Now, rework some of the designs you've got. Because again, that Tudor Black Bay is a brick. Yes, yeah. it's a brick. It's a murder weapon. You know, you clart someone around with their head with it, and you're done for fucking GBH. <laughs> yeah. Should we end this I with mean, a hot take? Also... Go on. What's hot take? Here's my hot take: If you own one Tudor, you own the whole collection. There's no need of buying a second Tudor. And actually, don't get people who collect more than one Tudor. That's my um, hot take about the brand. I disagree. I disagree. I, if they released a, if they release another Prince, I, I'd get another Tudor. Yeah, exactly. I can I can see what you're saying. I can see what you're saying because the the Black Bay, the Pro, the GMT, all at the same, in a way. They just need dressier pieces. 
They just need dressy pieces. That's all they need to do. They just need to diversify their catalogue. That's all they need to do. Also, and... one quick thing I will say mm. is um, with this watch specifically, the uh, GMT on all of them, all of the all of the models, right? Make it thinner. Shrink the movement. Make it thinner. Offer more sizes. Make this. Bring the the Pelagos, um, the quick adjustable Pelagos. Uh, integrate that into here, and also offer a Jubilee option. Do that, and I guarantee you they will sell a lot more of these. Mm. But the thing is, the thing is, if you did buy that watch, you could go to aftermarket. I think Uncle Seiko do a really, really good. They yeah, they yeah, do. But, although, but, see, but at the same you're, time, if you're why... spending three plus grand on a watch. You don't want to have to then go to Uncle Seiko to buy some knockoff. You want the micro adjustment that the Black Bay Pro has got and the, the, yeah, the class, yeah. Black Bay Fifty Four. Yeah, the T-Fit yeah. class. That's exactly yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you want. Yeah. The T-Fit clasp should come as standard on all metal oyster style bracelets along with Jubilee because it yeah. it's great. Mm. I mean, like, yeah, because I mean, it is, it is great. And I mean, at the end of the day, like, why? I mean, these are getting close to four. These are getting close to four now. They're very, very close to four. They're, they're over four if you have the um, gold with it as well. Like, you should have that option, like... You should have the option to buy for those different things with the bracelet, like in the class. They're getting a bit too expensive, Tudors, in my opinion. What's the bezel on them? Aluminium or ceramic or this? Um, I'm not actually sure. Um, oh yeah, it's the, the Black Bay GMT is three thousand seven hundred eighty quid. Yeah, it's wow. good. I mean, I paid. Jesus. You know, I paid less than that. I got mine last year in June or July, I believe. Um, but yeah, again, you always get, you can always get a deal. It's like when I got this, for example. I paid retail, but I also got this. And then I went in there a few months later um, as I was getting this. Basically, I was I got um, the uh, strap swapped over the bracelet because it was summer, and I got this. Mm. So like, I've got all of these free things sent to for retail, which isn't bad, to be fair. Mm. Well, yeah. So anyways, guys, thank you for your time. Anybody want to plug no, something? You. No, I will have, um, mm. we'll have a channel up soon. Um, then I could start, I guess, plugging it. But um, for the time being, we just kind of have to uh, use this wonderful channel uh, to uh, <laughs> promote ourselves. All right, guys. Uh, but no, thank you. Thank you for the posting. Thank you.